Okay, let's see how this goes. This is the third time I have been um, trying to record this. Um, this is third. This will be the third time I've read this chapter. Actually, I'm getting pretty good at this, <laughs> um, if you can believe it. But um, let's go back to what, you know, the chapter 15. I was kind of, I put some post-it notes in it is what I've been trying to tell you. Um, and the first, the last one that I put in was, who gave him back his, um, his invisible cloak? You know, all of a sudden, because he left it up in the tower and all of a sudden it appeared and it just appeared with a note just in case, you know, who might, who might need that. Um, and then also I put a note, was that really, that creature really Valdor or Valdemar or was it somebody else? Um, and then um, those centurion, centurions were, were actually supposed to help be, they're supposed to be guardians, but I'm wondering, were they really, why weren't they helping Potter? They knew who he was. Why weren't they helping him? Why were they mad that the one was helping, but the other ones refused to? That made me curious. I wonder if they'll play a part somewhere else in the books. Um, so let's get back to chapter 16, and hopefully this one will be able to, I'll be able to record. Okay, um, chapter 16, Through the Trap Door. In years to come, Harry would never quite remember how he had managed to get through his exams when, half, uh, when he half expected Valdemar to come bursting through the door at any moment. Yet the days crept by, and there could be no doubt that Fluffy was still alive and well behaved behind the locked door. It was sweltering hot, especially in the large classroom where they did their writing papers. They had been given special new quills for the exam, which had been bewitched with an anti-cheating spell. They had, practiced they had practiced exams as well. Professor Flitwick called them one by one into his class to see if they could make a pineapple tip tap dance across the desk. Professor McGonagall uh, uh, watched them turn a mouse into a snuff box. Points were given for, for how pretty the snuff box was, but taken away if it, had, if it had had whiskers. Snape made them all very nervous, breathing down their necks while they tried to remember how to make a forget -me forgetfulness potion. Harry did the best he could, trying to ignore the stabbing pains in his forehead, which had been bothering him ever since he, the trip to the forest. Neville thought Harry had had a bad case of exam nerves because Harry couldn't sleep. But the truth was that Harry had been wake, awakened by his old nightmares, except it was now worse than ever because there was a hooded figure drape, dripping of blood in it. Maybe it was because he hadn't seen what Harry had seen in the forest or because they had they didn't have the scars burning in their foreheads. But Ron, Hermione, didn't seem as worried about the stone as Harry. The ideal of Valdemar certainly scared them. But they kept but they didn't keep visiting their dream in their dreams, and they were so busy with their studies they didn't have much time to fret about what Snape or anybody else was up to. The very last exam was the history of magic, an hour of answering questions about batty old wizards who'd invented self-stirring cauldrons and they'd be free, free of a whole, for a whole wonderful week until their exams re uh, results came in. When the ghost of Professor Bynes told them to put down their quills and to roll up their parchments, Harry couldn't help cheering with the rest. That was the far the easiest that than I thought it would be, said Hermione, as they joined the crowds flocking out onto the sunny grounds. I don't I didn't have to learn about the sixteen thirty seven werewolf code of conduct or the uprising of the elf witch of eager. 
Armani always liked to go through her their exam papers afterwards, but Ron said that uh, made him feel ill. So they wandered down to the lake and flopped under the tree. The Weasley's twins and Lee Jordan were tickling the tentacles of a giant squid, which was basking in the warm shallows. A note, uh, not, uh, no more studying, Ron said happily, stretching out on the grass. You can look more cheerful, Harry. We've got a whole week before us. We, we find out how bad, before we find out how badly we've done. There's no more, there's no need to worry yet. Harry was rubbing his forehead. I wish I knew what this means, he bursted out angrily. My scar keeps hurting. It happens. Be- it happened before, but never as often as this. Go to, go to Madame Pearfree, Hermione suggested. I'm not ill, said Harry. I think it's a warning. It means danger's coming. Ron couldn't, uh, couldn't get worked up. It was too hot. Harry, relax. Hermione's right. The stone's safe as long as Dumbledore's around. Anyway, we never had any proof Snape find out, found out how to get past Fluffy. He nearly had his le- leg ripped off once. He's not going to try again in a, in a, in a hurry. And Neville will play Quibbage for England before Haggard lets Dumbledore free down. Harry nodded, um, but he couldn't shake off the lurking feeling that there was something he'd forgotten to do. Something important. Then he tried to explain this. Hermione said, that's just the exams. I woke up last night and was half through my transfiguration notes before I remembered that we've already done it. Harry was quite sure the unsettled feelings didn't have anything to do with the work, though. He watched an owl flutter towards the school across the dark, the bright blue sky, a note clinched in its mouth. Haggard was the only one who ever sent him letters. Haggard would never betray Dumbledore. Haggard would never tell anyone how to get past Fluffy. Never. But... Harry jumped suddenly to his feet. Where are you going? Ron said sleepily. I've just thought of something, said Harry. He had, turn- he had turned white. We've got to go and see Haggard now. Why? panted Hermione, hurrying to keep up. Don't you think it's a bit odd, said Harry, scrambling, scrambling up the grassy slope, that what Haggard wants more than anything else is a dragon. And a stranger turns up who just happens to have an egg in his pocket. How many people wander around with dragon eggs if it's against the wizard's law? Lucky, luck, luckily, lucky they found Hager, don't you think? Why don't, why don't I see it? Why didn't I see it before? What are you talking about, said Ron. But Harry uh, sprinted across the grounds towards the forest. Can't didn't and didn't answer. Haggard sat at the in an armchair outside his house. His trousers and sleeves were rolled up. He was uh, shelling peas into a large bowl. Hello, he said, smiling. Finish your exams? Got time for a drink? Yes, please, said Ron. But Harry cut him off. No, we're in a hurry, Haggard. I've got to ask you something. You know the night that you won Norbert? What did the stranger you were playing cards with look like? Don't know, said Haggard casually. He wouldn't take off his cloak. He saw he saw the three of them look stunned and raised an eyebrow. It's not unusual. You got a lot of funny folks in Hog's Head, and that's the pub down the vi- in the village. Might have been a dragon dealer, might have be, might have he be. I never saw his face. He kept his hood up. Harry shrunk down next to the bowl of peas. What did you talk to him about, Haggard? Did you mention Hogwarts at all? Might have come up, said Haggard, frowning as he uh, tried to remember. Ah, he said, what I did and told him I was a gamekeeper here. 
he asked a bit about the sort of creatures I look after. So I told him, I said that I always really wanted was a dragon. And then I can remember too well because he kept buying me drinks. Let's see. Uh, then he said he had a dragon's egg and we could play cards for it if I wanted. But he had to be sure that I could handle it. He didn't want it to go to any old home. So I told him, so I told him after Fluffy, a dragon would be easy. And did he? Did he seem interested in Fluffy? Harry asked, trying to keep his voice calm. Well, yeah, how many three-headed dogs do you meet, even around Hogwarts? So I told him, Fluffy's a piece of cake if you know how to calm him down. Just play him a bit of music and he'll go straight to off to sleep. Hagrid suddenly looked horrified. I shouldn't have told that, he blurted out. Forget I said it. Uh, uh, where are you going? Harry, Ron, and uh, Hermione uh, didn't speak to each other all the way, all until they came to a halt at the entrance hall, which seemed very cold and clammy after the, after the grounds. We'll go to, we've got to go to Dumbledore, said Harry. Hager told the strangers how to get past Fluffy, and it was either Snape or Valdor under the cloak. It must have been easy once you've got Hager drunk. I just hope Dumbledore believes us. Fiery uh, might back us up if Bane uh, doesn't stop him. Where's Dumbledore's office? They looked around as if hoping to see a sign pointing them to the right direction. They had never been told where Dumbledore lived, nor did they know anyone who had been sent to see him. We'll just have to, Harry began, but a voice suddenly rang across the hall. What are you three doing inside? It was Professor McGonagall, carrying a large pile of books. We want to see Professor Dumbledore said Hermione. Rather bravely, Harry and Ron thought. See, Professor Dumbledore? Professor McGonagall repeated, as though this was a very fishy, th was a very fishy thing to want to do. Why? Harry swallowed. Now what? It's a sort of secret, he said, but he wished at once he hadn't uh, because Professor McGonagall's nostrils flared. Professor Dumbledore left 10 minutes ago, she said coldly. He received an urgent owl from the Ministry of Magic and flew off to London at once. He's gone, said Harry um, frantically. Now, Professor Dumbledore is a very great wizard, Harry. He has many demands on his time, but this is important. Something you have to say is more important than the Ministry of Magic, Potter. Look, said Harry, throwing caution to the winds. Professor, it's about the Sorcerer's Stone. Whatever Professor McGonagall had expected, it wasn't that. The book she was carrying tumbled out of her hands, but she didn't pick them up. How do you know, she splurted. Professor, I know. I, I think I know that, uh, that someone's going to try to steal the stone. I've got to talk to Professor Dumbledore. She eyed him with a mixture of shock and suspicion. Professor Dumbledore will be back tomorrow, she said finally. I don't know how you found out about the stone, but rest assured no one is, can possibly steal it. It's too well protected. But Professor... Potter, I know what I'm talking about, she said uh, shortly. She leant down and gathered up the fallen books. I suggest you all go back outside and enjoy the sunshine. But they didn't. It's tonight, said Harry, once he was sure Professor McGonagall was out of earsight. Snape is going to the trap door tonight. He found out everything he needs, and now he's got Dumbledore out of his way. He sent the note. I bet the Ministry of Magic will be 
and will get a real shock when Dumbledore turns up. But what can we... Hermione gasped. Harry and Ron whirled around. Snape was standing there. Good afternoon, he said smoothly. They stared at him. You shouldn't be inside on a day like this, he said with an odd, twisted smile. We were, Harry began, without any idea what he was going to say. You want to be care more careful, said Snipe. Hanging around like this people will think you're up to something. And Gryffindorps really can't afford to lose any more points, can they? Harry flat flushed. He turned to go outside, but Snape called, up, called them back. Beware, Potter. Any more nighttime wandering, and I will personally make sure that you are expelled. Good day to you. He strolled off in the directions of the staff room. Out of the stone, out on the stone steps, her, Harry turned to the others. Right, here's what we're going to do. He whispered eagerly. One of us has to get to keep has to keep an eye on Snape. Wait outside the staff room and follow him. If he leaves, Hermione. You better do that. Why me? It's obvious, said Ron. You can pretend to be waiting for Professor Flintwick, you know. He put on a high voice. Oh, Professor Flintwick, I'm so worried. I think I've got a question 14B wrong. Oh, shut up, Hermione said. But she agreed to go and watch out for Snape. And we'd better stay outside the third floor corridor, Harry told Ron. Come on. But that point of the plan didn't work. No sooner had they reached the um, door separating Fluffy from the rest of the school, per Professor McGonagall turned up again, and this time she lost her temper. I suppose you are thinking... Uh, you're harder to get past than a pack of enchantments, she stormed. Enough of this nonsense. If I hear you'll come anywhere near here again, I'll take another 50, 50 points from Gryffindor. Yes, Weasley, from your, from your own house. From my own house. Harry and Ron went back to the common room. Harry had just said, at least Hermione's on Snape's tail when the portrait of the fat woman swung open and Hermione came in.